All right, y'all. Good morning. I can't stand it anymore. I've got to go into this motor and see what is the matter. Okay, I'm still, after all the research I've done, I can't find anybody that had this particular problem. I'm still convinced that the float is stuck wide open. And I watched my video back when I put the pump in. And I may have a idea of what has happened. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the hole taking off. First thing I'm going to do is unplug the electrics. Don't want no power in there, no spark. And then I'm going to take the uh, take all the hoses off, unbolt this, and take it off. I know the light's not real good, but now I'm doing this today because we have some weather coming in tonight and tomorrow. Uh, for us, very cold, very windy, and I cannot work in the cold and the wind outside. So I'll do the rest of my shop work this afternoon or tomorrow. Hopefully, if this is what I think it is, we'll be okay. It won't be too much trouble. I'll be back when I get all this off and we'll take it in the shop and look at it. All right. A lot easier to take off this time than it was last time. Let's take this in and take this little jewel apart here. The fuel comes in here goes down through the float system and then out to the injector pump and all that stuff. The hose, when you pump it and it's leaking, it's controlled by this hose and goes straight out to a drain that's over here. So, uh, hopefully my hunch is right. Let's go in here and take it apart and see. All right, got it unbolted here. We're going to take it off together and see. Okay, my thought was that tie strap had deteriorated, but it hasn't. That's the problem right there. See that float's not able to move up and down properly. Because I see it right now. This gasket here where the pump goes in, it's rubbing on it right there. Just hit a certain spot. You see there's the needle right there, needle and seat. And that float was stuck like that. When it gets up to proper fuel, it should be like this and close the system. Just like a car carburetor. If y'all remember the old Holly four barrels, you could take the cap off with it on the truck or car or whatever and adjust it so it wouldn't do that. That's it. Now, let's take the pump out and see if we can... Uh, fix that all right let's try to get a look at this you'll see right there where it's flared out that side that's what was catching it so what I'm going to do is just trim off a little flat right there because it still has to seal up around here but it's got to clear this pump also. Now this is probably due to this being an aftermarket because this came with the new pump. So, uh, let's adjust on that just a little bit. See if we can't make it better. All right, trimmed off a little flat there and we have full movement of the choke. I don't know if the camera will see it, but I can see plenty of daylight through there. When it's compressed in, I believe that's going to be okay. 
Lord of mercy, folks. I was worried about that. I think we got it, though. Let's put the pump back in. Like that. That's the way it goes. Okay, we have full movement. It's poked out a little bit here, but it's not hitting the float. Let's see if we can get a better look at it. All right, there we go. Everything else looks good. It looks clean. The fuel inside looks clean. It's a little bit. I drained some of it out. There's a little bit left in there. I'll dump that. We'll start again. But uh, now the tie strap that went around here, this one seemed to be okay, but it is very soft. I don't want that to be the next problem. So I need some stainless steel wire, little tiny wire. The stainless won't spark and it won't rust. Uh, I think Mama's got some in her jewelry making kit. Let me go see if she's got any. Or she'll let me have it. <laughs> all right, let's dump this out. Then we'll come back and put it all back together. I want to look at this anyway just to make sure there's no junk in there. All right, while I'm doing, this piece here is that rubber piece that comes down and sits on there. I took it off. It's got a bunch of, you can see that. See all them little cracks in there? It's just old. I took the clamp off. I have some more fuel line. But I'm just going to remake this. Clip this off and punch a hole in it there. And I have some... Uh, stainless thread stainless wire uh, on the way over here here shortly so while it's apart I might as well replace this too I, I really don't know what it does unless it's like a return line or something but uh hang on I'll have it straighter than that And I wonder if my leather punch will punch a hole in it. We'll see. Not quite as big as the other hole, but that's where the tie strap goes through. So I think that'll be fine for that little tiny wire. Let's see, let me get my other clippers out. I'm, I'm not happy with that. It's got to be really, really straight. Anyway, we'll put that back on there. And when uh, that wire gets here, we'll tie it down with that. What Mama had is uh, actually silver, sterling silver thread type stuff and I don't think that'll work so all right we almost fixed and I think we got very lucky on this because it didn't cost anything yet <laughs> I think we got it. 
got it fixed. Didn't cost any money. How about that? That's pretty cool. I don't know, Greg caught me a piece of stainless wire. That's probably going to cost you $200. But, uh, You'll pay for a long time. Yep, I'm in debt. <laughs> there we go. I'll be back in a little bit and tell you exactly what happened and why I think it happened. All right, y'all. The boat motor is fixed. As far as I know. Uh, the only thing left to do is got a pretty good cleanup job to do on this side over here where that fuel is leaking down it cut all the wax off of there so uh, I have some ripping compound and a little uh, buffing wheel to uh, try to get that clean back up get it pretty and shiny again but if it don't don't matter it works uh, my initial thought was the float stuck and that's what it was which I'm glad. But. Cheap fix. Well. No money at all fix. But uh. And that's always a good thing. <laughs> now we're good on cleaning this thing back up in a day or two. The weather is starting to move in. The temperature is dropping. It's supposed to be cold tonight. With high winds. Which will make it feel colder. And tomorrow will be a inside the shop day. So there we go. Special thanks to my buddy Greg for coming over and uh, helping me do a couple of things. And I will see y'all in a day or two with something else.